Hi, this is Racquetball Tim from HowToPlayRacquetball.org, and I want to thank you for checking out my backhand swing mechanics video. I'm going to provide you with some in-depth analysis of proper backhand stroke mechanics. This video will cover the high backhand splat from deep in the court. Normally, I want to let the ball come down into my hitting zone below my knee so I can swing flat and level and hit a nice flat shot, but he hit a good serve, kept the ball high in my hitting zone, but notice how I still kept the level swing, swung nice and flat through the ball, and finished flat and level. Notice my non-hitting hand touching the back wall there. This is really important. It lets you know uh, where you are on the court. It lets you know if you can be aggressive with the ball or go defensive, like hitting a ceiling shot or playing a shot off the back wall. Really, really important. In this case, the ball was coming down into my hitting zone, so I decided to be a little bit more aggressive with it. Typically, I'd take a down-the-line pass in this situation, but I went for the splat. Look at the early racket preparation. My racket is already up before the ball is coming down. You see my starting point there above my shoulder. The contact point for a splat shot is about midway through my swing, which angles the racket toward the side wall, where it can, the ball can pick up spin and then splat against the front wall. A straight in shot, the contact point would be off my front foot, so it's slightly back, uh, slightly further back from that. As I finish the swing here, I want you to notice the follow-through. The follow-through is one of the most important and telling parts of your swing. Mine is horizontal to the ground, which means I swung flat and level. If your follow-through is high, that's a good sign that you swung pendulum down toward the ball. I finish with my belly button facing the front wall and my racket pointing toward the back wall, exactly what I want. As you watch it again here in slow motion, really focus on the hips and how they rotate through the zone horizontally to the ground, very similar to my racket being horizontal to the ground. One of the best times to hit a splat shot is after you've loosened up your opponent with some down-the-line shots, uh, get him guessing towards that down-the-line, hit a splat, and mix it up. In that last example, my swing mechanics were just about where I want them to be, nice, flat, and level. Uh, in this next example, watch what happens when my swing mechanics are off just a little bit. If you blinked, you might have missed it, so I'm going to go in slow motion here. I'm squared up to the side wall. It looks good so far. Contact points away from my body. So far, so good. You're going to see a nice hip rotation through the zone, which is what I want. But look, there's the problem right there, the high follow-through. It's not horizontal as it was in the previous video, which you see right there. That's a nice horizontal follow-through, which leads to a nice flat shot. And there you see the high follow-through again. Uh, when you have a high follow-through like that, what it means is at some point you swung low through the hitting zone and finished high. Similar to a golfer, how they swing low to high. In golf, we want to create elevation, so we swing pendulum. In racquetball, we want to hit nice low flat shots, so we swing flat and level to the ground. And the result of the high follow-through on this shot here was a high shot. That shot should be about a foot lower on the front wall. Uh, it was gettable. Fortunately, my opponent didn't get it, and I still won the rally. In this next example, I want to show you how good footwork on the racquetball court can actually lead to good stroke mechanics. During a nice little rally with my opponent, I hit a little pinch shot in the front uh, left corner there. He puts me deep in the court with the ceiling ball, and I roll out the splat shot. As I start moving back toward the ball here, I want you to notice what happens right here. See my footwork? I square up toward the side wall and get my racket up in early racket preparation. By squaring up to the side wall and getting my racket up, I'm actually in the early phases of a swing. It's the beginning of my stroke mechanics. Then when I get back to the ball, I've already begun my swing. My racket's up above my shoulder, and I'm ready to rip it. As I mentioned earlier, contact point, full extension away from my body for maximum power. There's a nice flat follow through horizontal to the ground. That's exactly what I want. This is a really important video to understand. If you don't square up to the side wall and get your racket up, when you get back to the ball, you're not going to be in position to hit. A common mistake I see is people who hit the shot into the back wall because they aren't ready. Learning how to get yourself in position to hit. Uh, offensive shots rather than defensive shots into the back wall or up to the ceiling uh, can mean a difference between a level, like going from a B player to an A player, an A player to an open player. It's a huge, huge difference. I want to thank you for checking out the Backhand Splat series from HowToPlayRacketball.org. Make sure you subscribe so you can get all the latest videos as they come out. I'll see you on the courts.